My name is Emily Azarello. I'm located here in Ontario, Canada. I am an IFBB Pro Wellness competitor. I did bikini for about, oh goodness, six years, and I transitioned into the wellness division in 2020 and then got my pro card in 2021. Growing up with sports definitely is a huge advantage. So like I'm most, like I've played so many sports growing up, but it was mostly like lacrosse, which is a team sport, and then horseback riding too. I did that for like 17 years. And I think that really taught me like discipline for sure. And like, you know, when you fall off the horse, you get back on, you do it again. Like it was like, I had a coach, she was very intense. It's like, you know, if you didn't have like your footing right, your arms were out of place, you know, she would take away your reins and have you jump a course. She would take away your stirrups and have you jump a course. So I think doing that at such a young age and having someone, you know, talk to me that way and teaching me that discipline to have, you know, that's carried me through all of this. Getting into the gym, was it something that you kind of look forward to learning and continuing to grow kind of your knowledge base around? Or was it more just like, hey, this is something I enjoy. And so I'm just going to go in and kind of do stuff and I'll learn as I go. Or what was that for you? You know what? Yeah, I just got into it with a couple of friends of mine just going to the gym. And then someone approached me about competing. And I was like, what is this? Like, this is a real thing. And I just, you know, I was, you know, in my 20s, I didn't ride horses anymore. I didn't play sports anymore. But I still had that competitive nature to me. So I'm like, you know what, let's just give this a try and just to see what it's all about. And from there, I just, I love the process of it. And show day was so much fun. And I just wanted to learn more and to like keep doing it. I never thought I'd ever get to the Olympia. I just thought I would do this as, as for fun and just, you know, see what happens. But as for like training and knowing machines and that, like I'm still learning to this day. You know, as your body evolves throughout all of this and your goals for certain things, like my training is always changing. Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach, or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. How long were you actually in the gym before getting approached about bodybuilding? Oh my gosh, not long at all. <laughs> I would say maybe like six months. And was that something that like you, you kind of mentioned, you know, what the heck is this, but did it take you time to like sit and think about it? You know, you mentioned your competitive nature, but did you go and like look it up, do a Google search, you know, ask people about it? Or was it just like, okay, you know, I guess I'll try this thing out. Yeah. You know what? I just, I definitely like Googled it and I watched like all like the NPC news online videos of all the competitors and just like their thoughts and their process of their preps. I'm like, Oh, this is kind of like, different and interesting and it's an individual sort of just like how riding was for me it was like more like just me like on my own kind of deal so I kind of like that too especially being like shy it's like it's kind of nice to just be in your own lane yeah I can relate (laughs) (laughs) it's like the best hour of my life (laughs) that's so funny because so many people like look at it as the opposites like they have like either like just the anxiety of it or they just don't like doing it and I'm just like I can't imagine. I can't, I don't know what it must feel like to not like this. Like, it's just, it's always been from the time I started, it's always been something that I've enjoyed, but you know, talking about getting into like looking at other people on, you know, on the, on YouTube and on the internet and stuff like that. And like hearing how the process is, you know, went for them and what they went through. Do you feel like that, that in any way, other than just like that initial information, do you feel like that that was like a, a, good preparation for what you're about to do or do you feel like it kind of like hit you like oh my gosh this is so much or there's you know so much involved in this when you actually started to do it I think it definitely was good to hear like people's experiences that way you know when I was experiencing something like you know just feeling like a bag of shit or like you know just 
feeling like no pump or anything. I'm like, hey, these are all normal things to feel. So I think it was definitely good to do like research because sometimes people jump in and they have no idea the amount of dark days that you're going to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's It takes it to the extreme for sure. And I think that that's one thing that people really should be aware of about bodybuilding is that, you know, it can be this lifestyle, but if you're going to compete, then it is a sport, right? Like there, you're going to take it to a place that is sports related. It's, it's outcome related. And therefore you're going to be doing things that aren't just your typical, like we're going to go to the gym for an hour, get a workout in and then go and, you know, hang out and play video games and eat, you know, yeah. screen, like two completely different ways of life. You know, once again, everybody has their thing, but if you're going to do the sport, I think it's important to realize like that it is a sport. Oh, a hundred percent. It's something that you have to be like all in with, you know, some people, especially if you want to like make it to the Olympia, like, you know, like there's some people, they just like, they want to find that perfect balance of life and home and bodybuilding. That doesn't exist. It totally like, does not exist if you're trying to get to the Olympia. <laughs> like it's like, but I think it's like anything, like if you want to be successful and like you have to become so obsessed and so extreme. And like with me, every time I've gone into a prep, it's like, how can I make this more challenging? What can I do next to bring things to the next level? Like nitpicking little things, but that's what I've done and it worked. <laughs> So tell us, you know, I would definitely want to get into like that, that late, those later stages and where you are now, but what was that first prep experience like for you? You know, what, what were some of the things that you were like, oh my gosh, I never, never thought about this or I can't, but you, did you ever have that moment of like, I can't believe I'm doing this or why did I do this? Or, you know, just what was that really that first experience like? Oh, definitely. It was like, like, oh my goodness. Like it was, I think it was like 14 weeks long and it was like, the same food every single day, like the same sources of food, the same meal plan. I'm like, oh my God, I never would have thought. And I honestly never thought I was able to do it either. But that was like the hardest part for sure. <laughs> when you're in prep, does it does it feel like time is just like a, a, an hour can become like a year sometimes? Oh my goodness, definitely. Especially if like I don't have a busy day the day feels like forever and it feels like I'm waiting like hours and hours to eat going into this like obviously like having a competitive background like I did have expectations but I knew this was going to be the outcome just because you know I'm the newbie and I totally get it you do have to earn your stripes but it was just everything from the athletes meeting to getting off of that stage was just so like so unbelievable like the amount of attention the amount of fans that love bodybuilding like thousands of people was just it was very like overwhelming and just standing on that stage and just like I actually took in a moment and just like looked at the crowd looked at the judges looked at the other competitors and it was like it was like a holy shit moment like I made it here and then when I got home last weekend I actually like wrote down like everything I learned, pros and cons, because like, I'm so determined to go back next year and be the underdog. <laughs> Do you ever think about just how wild it is that maybe if that person wasn't there that day, or like, if you weren't there that day, like where your life would be? It's crazy. Like the week going into the Olympia, like, I literally thought about that. And I thought about like, you know, my bikini days and stepping on a regional show. And just like, I looked at all my photos and it was just like, I cried so much because it just like I've sacrificed so much to get here and like without even realizing it like you know it's just it's so wild like going from this little tiny thing to this it's just it's so crazy because I truly never thought I would have made it here. Was there a thought at all like okay I'm I'm tr making this transition but maybe I'm not like like it's it's a tough transition to make because maybe you know you're having success did you ever feel like you want to have that control? Like you want to be the one that chooses, you want to be the one that is making the decision to do certain things. Obviously, like as a competitor, you want to put yourself in the, be in the best position to win. And, you know, I guess wellness, you know, was that for you? 
But did you ever, did you ever like ha- have any hesitation of like, I want to do it my way. Like I want to, maybe not to this extreme, but kind of like, screw you. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Tell me like how I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to go and do it my way. I did not even want to do wellness. I had no desire to do it. I looked at these girls online. I'm like, there's no way I can like compete with these girls. They train like animals in Brazil. Like I can't do this. And that was like, I did North Americans. I placed third in bikini and then I did Canadian nationals. I placed like second or third there. And when I did that show in October, everybody was messaging me to do wellness. My suit sponsor had a wellness suit ready for me. Like everybody wanted me to do wellness. And I was, no, nope, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it at all. But my husband coaches me now. And he was like, look, like if you want to stay in bikini, like you can't really eat much more. You can't even do hip thrusts. Like I was just so capped out because I wasn't training legs for two years already to begin with. But I just became like, so depressed in the gym because it was I couldn't even lift weights anymore I was barely eating trying to get trying to lose as much muscle off my legs still and I just became like so sad so February came and I was like you know what let's do it (laughs) let's just let's just try and see what happens and then it all worked out do you feel like you were like that, that you wanted that bikini pro car, you wanted to chase that or was it just the, was it more of the fear of like making that change that held you back and then doing, you know, making that change finally, it was just time to do it or like what was making you hang on, I guess, so much to the bikini when you, you know, you were having the success, but you weren't taking that next step. Yeah. And that's just it. Like I was really scared because I'm like, I dedicated all this time to the bikini division and I'm so close to getting my pro card I'm like what if I just push a little bit more maybe it's right there and on the other hand it's like if I switch to wellness maybe I'll never get my pro card maybe it'll take me years to catch up to these girls and then I'll just end up giving up because it'll be so many years put into training so I was just scared I was scared of just you know possibly missing out on the opportunity in bikini and like possibly failing at wellness so it was just a very scary decision. How long did that fear persist with you? How did it take like doing some shows in wellness to let that fear kind of slip away a little bit? I think until I finally did my very first regional show, I was at peace because I got really good feedback from the judges. Like they told me I was like the Canadian Franciel. Like it was like once they said that, it was like, hey, this is we're on the right path now. But it was like, it was a long time of like unsettling, like fear. Yeah. I mean, once you get that feedback, I feel like it's kind of, uh, you know, a green light. It doesn't get better than that. (laughs) That's so funny to, to, to really have that fear, but then be, you know, have the affirmation, like that affirmation from the outside was training. Did you feel like this kind of like revived like life for training now that you could kind of you know, start to push in different areas. And, you know, you mentioned the kind of like the depression in the gym before, but did you start to like get like a new life and like this renewed sense of let's just see what's possible? Oh yeah. I felt like, I felt amazing. I felt like reborn. It felt so good to just like actually move some like real weight, go to the gym with a real purpose, like actually put my time in there and like feel like good and accomplished and like, I wasn't wasting my time just walking on a treadmill. On the food side, did it take some time to get used to that as well? Oh, no, I'm always hungry. (laughs) I was fine with food. (laughs) Did your, like, what about your body? Did it take time for your body to change gears at all and be like, all right, now we're doing this? You know what? Not really. Everything just kind of like, like molded together, like really well, which is like it. It just makes me feel like everything was like meant to be. You know, having your your husband as a coach, did it take a while to find that boundary and find like where the where the line is drawn and where to like when specific times we're going to talk about this, when specific times we're not going to talk about this? You know what? Like, I think he knows how bad I wanted it and how successful I wanted to be. Like, you know, so taking his criticism or the having the hard conversations, like when they needed to be had, like we had them and it was actually, it's actually very easy for him to coach me and like for me to, you know, absorb what he's saying and to take it in. Like, you know, cause there's days where I'm like, oh man, like 
I have to work, I have appointments and you want me to do faster cardio in the morning? And he'll just look at me and be like, what do you want? Like, do you want to win? And like, and that's exactly what he'll say. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, you know, so he knows when to be husband and when he needs to be coach. Yeah. Very brave to be put in the doghouse, you know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. But you know what? If I don't do well, I blame it on him. Like, as far as like, though, with that relationship, as far as like managing, does it ever feel like you have to carve out that personal, like that personal experience or that personal time? Obviously, like movie night or like even going for a walk together with the dog, like all that is like really minimized because like we both work like crazy hours too on top of going to the gym. So we both know like that'll kind of get like put on the back burner, but we both know it's like, it's only temporary. So we still like try to do it, especially like in prep too. like, we'll try to make a point even to just, you know, walking the dog together, like twice a week or something, or just having that like one night a week where we just kind of like hang on the couch and like, been binge watch a show like but it definitely is minimized but we both know it's temporary and we both know like it'll be worth it in the long run mm -hmm. so and like we both understand like bodybuilding isn't forever so if we both apply ourselves now as much as we can you know hopefully one day it'll pay off and then five years from now ten years from now you know we'll have time to do all those things Looking at kind of like gaining your pro card and, and wellness, was that something that you feel like, I guess, how long did it take for you to feel like, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be something that I'm going to do. This is going to be, this is a reality. And once you had that, like that idea that this was something that was possible, did you, it, was there anything that, that occurred that was like, all right, now that I know it's possible, maybe things change a little bit. Oh, definitely. I definitely took it way more seriously because I won my pro card and then I did my first pro show the very next day and I placed third and I had the expect expectation that I was going to come in dead last I had no routine I had no idea how long my posing routine had to be like I just completely won it I was so relaxed because I was so convinced I was going to get dead last but I placed third and then it was that moment where I realized I'm like oh my god like maybe like I could possibly win a show one day. Like, and like ever since that, like I've been so strict with like everything, my vitamins, getting my water in, eating to a tea, like everything. And it's just every time I've done a prep and then I've done a show, I've kind of shocked myself. So I've always tried to rewire my brain and try and take things to a new level. How do you manage the, um, when you're talking about like these things that maybe you're adding in as far as like, you know, doing different stretching, different times of the day, or like maybe it's trying out this new, you know, new supplement, or maybe it's, you know, shifting around the way that you, you know, their, your exercise uh, order, or, you know, trying out this food instead of that one. Do you have specific like things that you're looking for? Like, okay, it, it, it improved. And maybe this is more from like the coaching side, but do you, as the athlete look at it and go, that made a noticeable improvement so we're going to keep that in or maybe it's like i don't want it's not worth to me to have the added time because even though maybe it's a small per person or you know half a percent improvement it's not worth the added time or stress that that then that add on adds on so we're not going to do that anymore does that make sense like do you ever like pro and con each thing that you're kind of like adding on or switching in and out yeah definitely like there are some things that are like trial and error but I think that's just, that's all part of it. And that's all part of bodybuilding, right? Seeing what works, what doesn't work. And just kind of like, as your body changes too, right? Different things work and different things don't work. Like my prep going into the Olympia, like I started incorporating like these Brazilian lymphatic draining massages, which I didn't know of until like June. And I started incorporating those like every two weeks. And that was like a huge game changer. So I'll do that like on top of my regular RMT for my prep for every prep now. No, I've, I've actually never, never heard of that. I'll have to look into that. Is that, 
I mean, obviously when you're talking about lymphatic, but is that something that um, maybe it's different that like now versus when you started, but what's, the, what was the physical response to that when you first did it? And maybe even now. So basically it like, it helps a lot with like, it helps a lot with a lot of things, but it helped a lot with like my recovery from leg day. Um, she'll like rub my stomach in certain areas and it helps with like digestion and helps just move around the fluid. It helps get rid of toxins in your body. So that actually helps a lot with my digestion and like keeping my waist nice and small and tight. Interesting. Yeah. Like I yeah. said, I have to look into that. That's pretty cool. I guess oh, anything, yeah. anything the Brazilians are doing is obviously worth I know any, any secrets they have, I need to know. <laughs> Are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online? Have you been coaching online for years, yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. More isn't always better, but figuring out what that optimal optimal is, is, is what keeps people at the top. Oh yeah. It's definitely true because about a year ago I was training like five days a week and now we actually minimize that to four days a week. And I'm actually responding so much better to that. My workout, like the quality of my workouts are by far way better. And I'm just responding and growing faster to that. So was that challenging to like go from that five days to that four days? What did you start thinking like oh, yeah. beginning? Like, oh man, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm not working out today. I, yeah, it definitely was. It felt like I was like behind or like not doing enough. Like it definitely took some time to get used to, but it gave me more time to do like work on, you know, mobility and stretching things that I kind of neglected in the past. So it gave me more time to do that and like go get, more arm tea, go get a lymphatic draining massage. So it all kind of balanced out and just, it all worked out. Do you notice it like also impacting your, the mental side as well? Like how you're, you know, going into the gym feeling and thinking and maybe feeling like, okay, I'm only working out four days per week instead of five. So I know like putting in, not that you're putting in more, but like you have the mindset of like, I got to even make more of this because it's, it's a limited thing now versus doing more oh yeah it's definitely like so true knowing that you're only there four times a week it's like if you can push a little bit extra on that first or second day or whatever day it is you know like it just it makes it so it's just so much better so going to um kind of like that pre very pre-olympia time frame for you what was your mind, mindset or like your state of mind surrounding, you know, just thinking about, all right, the show is getting close, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm going to be stepping on stage in a few weeks. What did, how did you handle kind of like maybe a little bit of the nerves if you had those or the, you know, that those anxious feelings of just being in that, that big environment? I definitely thought about it a lot. It definitely like did not feel real that it was really happening until I was like there at the athletes meeting. But I just literally watched so many YouTube videos on like the girls on prejudging and, you know, all of the behind the scenes videos on NPC news. And I just rewatched all those videos and it kind of gave me a sense of how long they were on stage for how long they were standing on the sides for. Cause I think that's a big thing too. People don't realize it's like standing there and holding your poses is so hard. It looks like you're just kind of standing there smiling, but everything has to be tight and in control. And I think that was kind of like my only fear just cause it was my first time. You could be nervous. It could be hot from the light. So that was one thing that I was kind of focused on going into the Olympia. What did you do um, to prepare for, you know, that extended time of holding those poses? So this was actually the first year I had a posing coach. I usually do my own posing, but she told me to literally listen to the videos of the Olympia of the girls on stage. And she was like, pick a player and just like be that player, you know, go to the front, do your quarter turns, go to the side, pretend to be them. And like literally run through that. And it was like 25 minutes. So 
that definitely helped. Did you incorporate any, um, any like visualization? You know what? I always do that when I do cardio and I'm on the treadmill. Like, you know, I always like see myself posing on stage, run through my routine in my head. I'm sure I'm on the treadmill and my hands are moving too. (laughs) People probably think I'm silly, but I definitely like envision that. And I think that's a huge important thing because I think if you see it and you envision it, you start to feel it. And then, you know, you feel it, you start to believe in it, and then you believe in yourself. Did you continue to do those kind of things like the week of um, of the Olympia? So going there, like, I definitely didn't pose as much only because like, my husband wanted me to like rest, keep my feet up as much as possible just to reduce like inflammation in my legs. Um, but I would be there and I would be in the middle of a popular gym there. And there'd be other pros around me and he would be like, Hey, let's see what you look like. Go pose. And I would be posing in the middle of the gym in front of everybody. So doing those kinds of things definitely helped before we flew out to the Olympia. There was a local show here and the show promoter was like, Hey, get on stage completely out of the blue, get on stage. And he was like, just practice your routine. So that was kind of really good. Just like, so out of nowhere, just like unexpected, just, hop on stage, it's intermission, there's an audience. And that got rid of some of my nerves, oddly enough. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran-owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. What was that experience for you, the support of just like the whole like Olympia experience, the committee and the people that are you know there to make it that experience? Oh my goodness. It was crazy. Like you definitely were taken care of for sure. Like every division had like their own rep and you could reach out to your rep at any point with any questions about anything, which was super handy. But like, even just waiting for like the athletes meeting, like the girls were just super sweet, super nice. The ones that spoke English at least, but (laughs) But yeah, it was, it was very supportive. Like everybody was. How is it as far as like, you know, when you get to that level and and there's so many, um, you know, just Brazilian and other, other obviously competitors from other countries, how do you, does it feel like you're almost in this like different environment? You know what? I, I don't know. Maybe because like we all like follow each other on Instagram And, like, we all like each other's photos. Everyone can, like, comment on your photos and, like, you can translate it. So it was weird. It was, like, this, like, weird connection. It was, like, we already, already knew each other. Like, it was very nice. And even though, like, people couldn't speak English, they would still, like, point at their phone because they wanted a picture. It was, it was really, really amazing. How did, how did it go as far as, like, getting to connect with just, like, new people and getting to... Um, you know, grow your, grow your community and the sport and and all that kind of good stuff. It was like super easy. Like you just like, I don't know if it's because like all these women just like, you know, we all have our own battles of getting here, our own struggles. Like everybody knows how hard it is to get here. And I think everyone was just so grateful to be there. And just everyone was just so chatty and like very touchy and like very loving and, it was super easy. I, everyone was just so happy to be there. So what was that experience for you as far as stepping on stage for the first time, you know, getting on the Olympia stage, obviously, you know, a dream come true, a goal, massive goal reached, but did it, um, did it meet what your expectations were? Not from like a good or bad, but from like, here's what I think it's going to be. And here's how it actually kind of turned out as far as, you know, looking out at this crowd and and the lights on you and, having competitors that are like at the top of the game around you, like all that kind of stuff. It was definitely like everything around me, like the audience, the stage, the lights, even the backstage. I'm like, this is totally what I expected, but there was still a very like overwhelming feeling just being on that stage and just like taking it in for that first time. And everybody kind of warned me. They were like, just, enjoy it. Enjoy your first one. You don't forget your first one. It's going to be a lot. And it definitely was, but the whole experience itself, the lights, the stage, everything was like what I expected. 
you put in a lot of hard work, but at the end of the day, it does take some luck. Oh yeah. You know, I definitely did put in a lot of work. I always do. I did get better since um, my winning show in April and that's what matters a lot to me, but just being against the best of the best was like, I now know exactly like how, like what I need to do. Doing it the first time. Does it now feel like, not that it's an expectation, but that it's a, that it's a possibility now, like, okay, it's no longer this dream. It's something that I know I can do because I've done it before. Oh, definitely. When I go back, not if, but when I go back, like, it'll be just like another show for sure. Have you made any notes or, or had any thoughts along the lines of like, here's what we're going to do different next time? Um, You know, it definitely like when I got home, I wrote like a list of everything I learned from the show. So I will definitely be like more prepared what to do, what not to do, like when to fly in, when to fly home, like all these little details, like I literally wrote them all down. Interesting. What do you think if, you know, if you don't mind sharing, what would be maybe like the biggest one that you feel like kind of is going to make the biggest difference next time? I think just like keeping to myself, just in my hotel room on my own. Like I always do better, but on my own or just like with a small group of people. So I think I'll remember that one next time. Yeah. Well, I think that like you mentioned is part of the experience of like getting there is, is probably like just being there and taking it all in and seeing everything and doing everything and being a part of everything. Any other show goes, the Olympia is this days of events and days of exposure to so many people like you're saying and whether it's other competitors or just the public and you know you're working out at a different gym for days and days and you don't have your kitchen you know like there's there's a lot that goes along with it 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 doesn't make it just another like it doesn't it's not like all things equal kind of show it's like you have to almost have this different way of doing things just for that show. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like the Wednesday and the Thursday, it's like the athletes meeting was incredible. Like it was not what I, that was not what I expected, but then the Thursday is the meet and greet. And that was so long too. And it's every other show. It's kind of like you get to where you need to be. You get your tan and you chill in your room. You go get your button. You go back to your room that's it. So just maybe getting there more ahead and just like getting more comfortable and at peace before all that, I think that would have definitely helped. So like, what's that been like for you just post show? Like, I'm sure like after any show, there's, there's a big rush, but, but after this one, how's it been post show? I'm just like, I'm honestly like so eager to get back on stage already. It's so crazy. But at the same time, I'm like, Oh my God, I need to like, triple the size of my glutes. (laughs) So I need to make that happen first. (laughs) Like my blinders are on and that's my focus now. (laughs) And since I switched to wellness, I think the longest off season I had was six months. So I'm excited to take off like another five or maybe six months again and to see how I transform. So I'm so excited to just get back into training. This is the first year I've actually had a leg day coach. And I have a training partner for my glute day. So I'm so excited to get back to training with my friend, Valerie, who's a figure pro as well. So that makes a difference. And I never thought training with somebody would help me so much, but it really does. Training with her, we're both very similar with our training. It's very, you go, I go. It's not standing around. We're both hungry to be be to be better. So And like, we both just like push each other so much. Like we'll be dying and like, she'll like tell me to do five more and I'll tell her to do like five more and we just die together. And then my other like day coach, um, he's like very specific with my training. Like he'll look at my show day pictures and he'll be like, we need to like bring out the upper detail in your, in your quad and like work on like the side of your calves. Like he's very like specific and he's into like the biomechanics of like, training and that has helped like a lot you're always changing things up you're always keeping things interesting so i do love that part of it i really appreciate you coming on really enjoyed chatting with you and kind of digging into a little bit of this stuff and you know i'm sure we could you know sit here and chat for for hours to come but um (laughs) i really i really appreciate you coming on oh my goodness thank you so much for having me this was awesome 
Yeah, it was my pleasure. And uh, before we head, if you want to share any any socials or websites or anything like that, you can. So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's just Emily Azzarello, IFBB Pro. You can follow my journey and look into my off season after the post Olympia. If you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new Coaches Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coach's Corner is down in the description below.